Hey friends, it's Jeff Heath coming at you today with another video. Today's video is a little bit different. It's gonna be almost podcast format. I've got a special guest included in this video. So it's a little bit of a long one, a little bit more podcast format, but would love for you to watch it. So here it is. Hey Jeff. How's it going Levi? Yeah, it's good. It's uh weather's turning up. It's going to be a good summer. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, sunny here in Port Hardy, surprisingly, so it's good. That's rare. I know. It's true. It's always sunny here, just like it's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, and the water's never choppy, right? Nope. And it's warm all the time. All warm all the time. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to pick your brain as you are the uh, DIY storage, make your own stuff out of a van and then shipping container, then DIY your life kind of guy. Sure, I I mean, I, I would be cautious of taking advice from me because I constantly change and adapt what I made in, in the past. <laughs> so I'm always changing what I've already made, but uh, I'm game. You know what the best thing about you though is? Uh, tall, dark and handsome? No, that, definitely not that. <laughs> it's, it's you're innovative. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> So here, let me show you my space really quick. So you come out here to my office. Yeah. Right, so cool little space here, we share, share workspace. So this space back here is all mine. So I've got this big shelf right here, which I stole your idea of having like a workbench. Yep. Yeah. So I think I'll do that. But this is the space I have. So we got tripods laying around. We've got a big hot water tank in the middle. I have a pegboard, which I've picked up from somewhere. I have all these bins, lights, tripods, cameras, lights, diffusers, lenses, charging, light stands. It's all just kind of a mess. Is most of the stuff active use, like it will be used on a monthly basis or is it, or is there some like long-term storage of old boxes and stuff in there as well? Yeah, so that's kind of how I've got it organized now. So like camera stuff is here right now, but I kind of want to put it away somewhere. Yeah. So it's dust free for one or just like organized. Uh, so this is kind of day use stuff or like weekly use. Yeah. Under here is like monthly use kind of stuff. Uh, and then here is just storage, essentially. Um, so just wondering what you would do, particularly with storing, getting things, essentially what I want to do is get stuff off the floor, uh, particularly yeah. with this hot water tank back here. Should anything ever happen, I don't want anything on the ground either, so. What are the, what are the big problem areas currently? So you, like, what are you? Is, is this, would this area ever be on camera? Like, does it have to look pretty at all? Or is it mainly just, hey, I want this to be as functional as possible? Yeah, I want to use this as a YouTube studio space. Yeah. Um, so that's partly why I got that shelving unit because I want to put some lights in there. Uh, kind of like what you have in your shipping container with the lights underneath kind of as a workspace. Um, you know, I've got different lights I can use as to like util utilize the space because the front of our office is a shared office space, so I need a place that's away from everybody to to do that. Yeah, especially, um, are, are you able to paint in there as far as getting it to a look that you want? Yeah, I can do whatever I want. And is, uh, is that concrete on the floor as far as for sound and filming in there? Yeah, it's concrete everywhere. Yeah. I ended up, uh, the room that I film in is was pretty... It wasn't horrible, but the sound definitely, you could like hear that you were in a room because the wall is far enough away and it's pretty reflective. Um, so some of those packs of just cheap Amazon uh, sound deadener foam was like, at least from a filming perspective, was pretty helpful. You can make DIY ones, but I think especially getting some of those on the ceiling, surprisingly, like the ceiling and open walls, because the sound in that space is going to reflect, like I can hear it when you're talking, it'll, re it'll reflect off the floor and the ceiling. And it'll do a trap like that. So unless you want to put a carpet on the floor and stuff on the ceiling, at least some stuff on the ceiling would prevent the bounce that direction. Um, what I would, what I really like doing is I, at least for anytime I've made something too customized for a specific item, it ends up, 
I either end up getting a new item at some point. Like if I make something right for this one light, then in the future I'm frustrated if I use a different light um, when it comes to storage stuff. But something that never changes for me is just big plastic, plastic, <laughs> big uh, clear bins that are catch-all bins. So especially that stuff that you don't have a specific place for it, but it needs to go somewhere in between and you, and you need to know where to find it. So I have... Um, like I'm looking at a few of my catch-all bins right now. And one says film audio accessories. One is cables. The other is filmmaking catch-all. So basically all the audio stuff that doesn't have a home just like goes into these clear bins so I can see it. Because I'm kind of weird where I like being able to see this stuff. So I like having lots of surfaces. <laughs> so I love using clear bins because you can at a glance see what's in the bin. But then as far as your, as far as the desk shelf that you're doing, are you planning on, would you uh, put, like, would you, would you have the desk come out a little further than one of the shelves or just kind of like set it? Yeah, it'll go out a little bit further. I'll just get some MDF, I think, and carpet it. So have like a back wall that's carpeted and then front wall carpeted and do Velcro for a lot of the charging stuff as well. For me, it's just important that when it's time to, if, if I am going to record something that I can vacate most of the obstacles <laughs> that would be on camera. And that's kind of what this corner of this room ended up being is if I film in this direction, I, I know I can get away with not needing to show everything else. Um, mounting stuff off the ceiling, maybe this will be kind of interesting. Um, I am screen recording, so you should be able to see this, but for my camera stand and lights, I am oh, yeah. on for, I'm going for ceiling mounts just because when you have the stand set up, it creates it just clutters up the floor. Yeah. So being able to, like this is just mounted off the ceiling and it wobbles if you touch it, but yeah. if you just leave it there for a bit. So okay. I kind of have, I just did a, like it's just a piece of steel wobbling like that with a plate screwed into a stud. Oh, that's a good idea. And my light's there. Aside from like all your storage stuff like that, there's a lot to, there's a lot to happen there. But as far as a shooting space, one of my favorite things to do quickly is to just buy some five eights round bar um and weld a flat plate to the base of it and that 5 8 weld bar basically any grip accessories can mount to it so um any light poles anything like that so over here like, like this, this bar, bar right here is just 5 8 uh solid steel bar yeah there's like 30 40 bucks for a piece of it and this is just some angle iron and you can just like cut holes and oh it's a great idea because I, I I originally had, I felt like I got scammed a little bit, but I bought like Matthews plates and they're, they're like stainless steel and plated and they're shiny and they're like 50 bucks a piece. But it's like, why do I need something that's like, why do I need something that's rust proof if it's never going to be outside and like super, it's like, why do I need the fancy version when I could just go buy some steel for 30 bucks? That's everything in the film world. I just bought a tripod for $2,000 and it hurt my heart. Yes. So you could almost like, like a, like a theater or something, how they have that scaffolding across. You could even do a bar, the full width of your room and tie it up to the ceiling in a couple spots. And then you could mount lights anywhere. Um, like obviously you don't have to mount your camera from it like I did, but that's my favorite thing to, to do is light mounts from the ceiling. There's some, uh, if you go to Donna did it's Instagram, he just, um, he just on his Instagram feed posted a product that's that's wall mounted and has a bunch of stand accessories specifically meant to be wall mounted, like for for a YouTube shooting space. Um, I'm not saying to buy that, but looking at that as a, you know Donna did it right. Yeah. Looking at that as like a idea for design is definitely intriguing. Okay, what what else, what else about your storage stuff? What else did you have in mind? What do you? Yeah, uh, just maybe utilizing this pegboard. I think is <clears throat> just for storage, but I'm not sure what I would. I got it for free, uh, yeah. but just wondering if you know it's like a full four by eight sheet. Some people use pegboard on camera, and it looks pretty neat depending on what you have. I was, I was thinking of doing like either having that as the charging thing or the back of the workbench as the charging thing. So. But essentially, because I travel so much for work, I want to be able to be like a lot of guys just fix their charging wall to the thing. I need to be able to take those off. Chargers are are endlessly frustrating. Um, 
I haven't found a good way around chargers, but what I, I'll, I don't have, this is an, I, this won't work probably on your, on camera. Um, yeah, this is way too dark over here. Uh, like on this one shelf here, I have all Velcro kind mm -hmm. of just striping it. Yeah. And then my, I put all the chargers away. Um, I don't have it around. All my chargers have Velcro on the back. Yeah, that's what I got. And then they can mount to like a, to the air so they don't move around. Yeah. And then they can go inside a Pelican case with foam. But having a, oh, there we go. Having these guys, like the multi-USB port, mm -hmm. uh, power stations for, for charging areas. Yeah, I'm, I'm still endlessly a big fan of open surfaces. Like I just, I like just having shelf space to spread things out on. Yeah, and that's what I think I like too, especially because I'm gonna, I'm doing like, selling art prints and stuff too. So I want a little station to do like mats and cut photos and stuff like that as well. So, yeah. Okay, so you're saying, clear bins. Um, sound dampening for in here. Yeah, especially if you're gonna film in there. And then drop lighting to get things off the floor rather than having C stands walking around everywhere. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I think that's the takeaway. Like the two things that I like what that I would do in a space immediately are figure out how you're going to film in that space effectively. So you don't have stands cluttering it. So like ceiling mounted lights easily is is so awesome. Having perimeter like don't underestimate the value of a of a shelf at the ceiling level that just wraps around the room because that surface area can just be so effective for storing tons of stuff. But I unashamedly use one of those massive Sharpies and just label things big. Yeah, I've been using gaff tape and then just Casey Nice statting it. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Especially with the especially with the dark rubber made bins, which can be nice because you don't have to look at what's in them. Just having a label on it is so stinking helpful. <laughs> Catch all bins. I'm a huge fan of catch all bins because, like, that stuff that never has a permanent home that just needs to get off a surface in the meantime. So, I've got a bin for all chargers that are just not in use, power cables, like, we have a billion and one AC adapters for all sorts of stuff, um, audio, mic accessories like the puffies and stuff. Just having those bins just makes me feel so, so much better when I, when it comes time to actually find something that I want to know where it is. That that brick wall could look pretty cool on camera in the back if you. Yeah, that's why I want to utilize this wall here, the brick wall, to be kind of like one side of the studio, and then I think the shelf being on this side against the drywall, so kind of shooting at a forty-five almost. And a hard hard thing with spaces, like especially if you want it to look great on camera, something that I didn't take into account in this space, which is tough, is like big large dark areas don't translate well to youtube compression mm -hmm. that it'll that's why you need a big neon sign back there that says left coast media yeah essentially because the the more detail and light that's in the mid-range of the image youtube compression treats that much better because it sees that as being valuable where the shadows it just decides okay we can simplify the shadows and that's where you get that like obviously all that macro blocking that we're used to seeing on youtube but that gets Especially in this space, that's something that I probably, maybe, I don't know if I had gone with a different color, if I went with like the gray, if that would have helped. But um, that's something that I've noticed in the videos that I've shot here already is that with YouTube compression, that so I actually have to light the background so that way it doesn't, because, uh, yeah, so that way it doesn't go full too dark, because then it like looks real bad on YouTube, unfortunately. But I like dark colors, but on camera it doesn't. You know, that mood, that moody look is great, but it doesn't translate very well to, to YouTube compression. I think that's Ger Gerald who tipped me off to that once when he was talking about his new space setup is he made sure to get more light on different details and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So I've got a bunch of colored lights and different things I'll try to put in different spaces. So. Sweet, man. Yeah. Well, well uh, thank you, my friend. I'm getting it set up. Yeah, I'll let you know how it goes. I'll give you a progress report. <laughs> yeah right now i kind of knew what i wanted to do but i just wanted to pick your brain about the first a few things so i think that's good actually thinking about planning ahead of time if it's going to be a space that's filmed i wasn't totally thinking about that other than 
being a utilitarian space, but if I'm going to be filming in here, it's got to be a little nicer. So I know that was a little bit of a weird ending, but we ended up rambling on about other stuff for a little while, but uh, yeah. So just want to say a huge thank you to Levi for taking time out of his day to help me plan and organize the space that I have back here. As you can see, it's already been mostly built. There's a few other little things I have to do, but that's coming in a part two video on how I built this space and how I'm utilizing it not only as my workspace for my video production company, uh, but also now going to be utilizing it as part of my YouTube studio. So subscribe and I'm going to make some more videos. And if you don't subscribe, I'm going to tell you. Um, so I didn't mean to say I'm going to kill you. I just meant... I'm not going to make any more videos.